intercultural trade and commerce flourished in the country long before the Mauryan period. In this chapter, we will study the following concepts. 1. Growth of towns. 2. Trade and industry. Towns, traders and craftsmen. Intercultural trade and commerce flourished in the country long before the Mauryan period. We know for a fact that river valley civilizations flourished partly on account of the brisk trade made possible by navigable rivers. So it must have been the case with the advanced civilizations that sprang up along our own river valleys right from the Indus to the Ganga and Brahmaputra. The Indus Valley Civilization and those of the Vedic period rose and fell, as did others in the West, such as the Sumerian, Roman, Greek and Phoenician cultures, all of which disintegrated in course of time due to a variety of factors. Both external and internal trade was carried on in most parts of India. Kautilya, as well as some foreign visitors, have left many details concerning commercial activity in India. Several prosperous towns came into being from the 6th century BC onwards. There were many ports along the coasts. Surat conducted brick trade with the Phoenicians. Thus, merchants from different countries came to India for trade. As a result of trade, towns and crafts flourished substantially in India. Growth of towns. Towns, that is, urban centers and mercantile activities go hand in hand. Trade and crafts flourished wherever people could congregate and do business conveniently and safely. The growth of towns in medieval India was the result of development in trade and crafts which in turn rested on organized and efficient agricultural operations in the villages. With food supplies assured, a flexible monetary system in place and adequate administrative arrangements installed to guarantee free and fair trade, there was nothing to discourage trade in towns. However, all urbanized centers were not bastions of commercial activities. Many purely administrative centers, example court towns, educational centers, example Nalanda, as well as pilgrimage destinations, temple towns, also developed in different parts of the land. Besides these trade routes in the medieval period, there were many local towns such as Mundi and Hart towns which served as focal points for rural marketing activities. Nagara was a common term for a town, while the term Mahanagara applied to a city. As Nagar and Mahanagar, these terms are still in vogue. Court Towns It was a place where rulers, central authority resided. The king would hold his darbar proceedings in that town. It often doubled as the capital. Sometimes, court towns were shifted from one place to another. For example, Chandragupta II shifted his capital from Patliputra to Ujjain, Muhammad bin Tughlaq from Delhi to Devagiri, or Dolatabad, a move of 1,500 kilometers from Delhi. Akbar shifted his capital from Agra to Fatehpur Sikri in 1571. Some of the important towns in the Indus Valley were Harappa and Mohanjadaro, Indraprastha and Ayodhya of the Vedic period in Gangetic Plains, and Rajgriha, Avanti, Kosala and Ujjain of the Mahajanapada period, etc. In South India, Madurai, Thanjavur, Badami, Kanchi, Vengi, etc. were capital towns of different dynasties. These towns were centers of royal activities as well as trade, temples, markets and crafts. Many court towns such as Kannauj, Lahore, Delhi, Agra and Fatehpur Sikri evolved during the medieval period. Temple Towns Temples have always played a vital role in the Hindu society. Thus, great importance was attached to the temples. Far from being simply places of worship, temples also functioned as commercial, administrative and academic centers. Land 
and other forms of wealth were generously donated to temples as a result of which they became centers of social, political and economic activities. The Chola rulers held their courts in the mandapa of the temple of Raja Rajeshwara. The main pilgrim towns were Bodh Gaya, Sanchi, Mathura, Bhilasa, Somnath, Kasi, Puri, Ajmer, Fatehpur Sikri and Amritsar in North India, Kanchipuram, Madurai, Thanjavur and Tirupati in South India. Commercial Towns Many trading centers flourished owing to thriving exports and imports. Northern India was involved in all sorts of trading activities from tourism and pilgrimage to internal commerce. South India with many natural ports played a crucial role in exports and imports. Roman coins discovered at various sites are proof of the valuable trade that was carried out at these port towns. Some of the important trading towns which were important manufacturing centers were Taksila, Mathura, Gandhara, Kandhar, Multan, Madurai, Kanchipuram, Bhroach, Ujjain, Lahore, Delhi, Surat, Dhaka, Patna, Balasore, Tamralipti, Masolipattinam and Ahmedabad. We have very little information about the economic conditions of people under the Delhi Sultanate. The chroniclers of this period were more interested in events at court rather than the lives of ordinary people. On the contrary, we have a fair amount of information about economic conditions in the Mughal period thanks to chroniclers of the likes of Francois Bernier, Tavernier, Abul Fazl, etc. Crafts Ibn Battuta visited India in the 14th century and lived at the court of Muhammad bin Tughlaq for eight years. He says that the soil was so fertile that it produced rice, sesame, sugarcane and cotton in abundance. They were the basis of many village industries such as oil pressing, jaggery making, weaving etc. These karkhanas supplied material for the royal household. For example, Muhammad bin Tughlaq employed 4,000 silk weavers to produce silk fabric for the robes of honor, which he distributed. 500 craftsmen were engaged in gold embroidery. Firoz Shah Tughlaq divided his karkhanas into 36 sections. They were controlled by leading noblemen. During Mughal rule, karkhanas were also called buyutat. Several crafts were associated with work involving gold, silver, lead, brass and precious stones. Cloth making, silk weaving and the making of arms and luxury articles also made progress. Certain towns in Bengal and Gujarat were famous for fine quality fabrics. Example, Murshidabad. Fine quality cloth was produced in other towns as well. Kambe in Gujarat was famous for textiles and for gold and silver work. Kashmir became an important center for paper making and book binding. Crafts such as stone polishing, stone cutting, bottle making, window cutting and gold beating also developed in Kashmir and other regional centers. In mines and metallurgy, India achieved a remarkable standard of workmanship. This is evident from the Meheroli iron pillar and various bronze and ashtadhatu, an alloy of eight metals, idols. According to Abul Fazl, Indians were proficient in the metallurgy concerning iron, brass, silver and zinc alloys. Indian swords were famous throughout Asia. Different kinds of domestic utensils, scissors and knives with extensive gold and silver inlay work were also made. Coin minting was an important craft. This period is noted for numerous types of coins made of gold, Jalali of Akbar, Silver, Tanka Rupia, Copper and Bronze. Muhammad bin Tughlaq decided to introduce a bronze coin which was to have the same value as the silver Tanka. Specimens of this coin have been found in different parts of India and can be seen in museums. Muhammad bin Tughlaq was compelled to withdraw his token currency because 
people started to forge the new coins, it depreciated sharply in value and lost its mass acceptance. These coins were dumped in heaps outside Tughlaqabad fort and Barani says that they remained there for many years. Over the centuries, Indian craftsmen became highly skilled. Their workmanship as jewelers and smiths was in great demand within the country as well as abroad. There were also experts in the work of ivory carving, perfumery, dye making and craftsmanship in gems and precious stones.